Unfortunately, our heroes do not give a crap about the not very secretly evil dictator. They've got their own worries, their own problems to deal with, which are only alluded to for now. Further references to their predicament arrive later, but first, the brothers are invited back to dinner by the nicest anime character of all times, Maze Hughes. Ow! Daddy, your beard is itchy! <laughs> like this? Itchy! Aww. Itchy! <laughs> The amount of Aww. moments that result from the Hughes family is astounding. It's enough to warm even the coldest of hearts, though that doesn't bode well for his long-term participation in the series. For now, however, we see that whatever is wrong with the Alwick brothers, they want to keep it a secret, even from Hughes. Alphonse can't eat, sleep, or remove his armor, and the extent of whatever is wrong with him is then spoken of when the two are alone. Brother. You awake? <laughs> Miss Gracie's quiche. It looked a lot like Mom's, huh? Yeah, almost as good, too. Really? In that case, I'm definitely adding it to the list of things I'm gonna eat once I get my body back. <laughs> right. Put it on there, right near the top. Brother? Hmm? I sure would like to get our old bodies back soon. I know. Me too. How Alphonse lost his body, yet is still there, is explained later. Moving on, though, the hunt for Mr. McDoodle begins anew. However, this time, more than just the Elwick brothers are on the job. Here, the show seeks to display its ability for cool, fast-paced action. Except you'll need far more than water to quench my fists! After having his snowballs kicked by each alchemist he comes across, McDougal keeps giving them the cold shoulder and escaping, eventually bringing his diabolical plan to fruition. By drawing several circles around the city, he can freeze a large amount of water to grow giant ice walls of death. The ice walls! They're merging! But that would mean... Yes, Al, it means infinite excuses for ice-related puns. If you're King Bradley, or your cold-blooded crimes in Ishval, I condemn you to a frozen hell. Tonight's forecast, a freeze is coming. I'm afraid that my condition has left me cold to your pleas of mercy. During this cool party, there's also a flash of someone's eyes. In episode one, you will not have a clue what the fact this is. Hell, by the end of the series, you still might not know, but later those eyes will be damn recognizable. The Alwick brothers soon enter the fight, and it's not long until their secret is revealed. Alphonse's helmet gets knocked off, and we see the empty shell within, and a circle of blood drawn on the armor. We then get flashes of what the hell happened. Oh, damn it, it, this can't be happening. It, no! God, what have I done? Give him back. He's my brother. Just give him back. He's my little brother. He's all I have left. It turns out the brothers committed a taboo, an unspeakable sin, in that they attempted human transmutation. In attempting to manipulate living matter, which we later find to be their dead mother, Edward lost his leg and Alphonse's entire body. To bring his brother back, Edward then sacrificed his arm to bind his brother's soul to a suit of armor, which just happened to be laying around. But further details are left again for later. This topic is another sore spot for Edward, who immediately beats the crap out of McDougal, who for the fourth time escapes the goodies. Such repetition is uncool, anime. If at first you don't succeed, try, 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 try again. It turns out that revenge isn't a dish best served cold, as McDougal comes face to face with Fuhrer King Bradley. And if the title Fuhrer King, his eye patch, or the evil mustache didn't scream he's the bad guy, the animation turns black and white as he chops down McDougal in a single stroke, red blood splattering everywhere. Ah oh, yes, job well done, full metal. I came out to see if I could lend a hand. And a thing. That I'd actually be the one to catch him. If nothing else, this should make an exciting story for my son. But episode 1 isn't over just yet. After showing that our heroes are okay, the anime gives us one more scene to whet our appetite. We see two figures, which we know are evil, from the blood red screen, her cleavage, and the fact that that guy seems to be eating someone. And if that's not enough to show they're the bad guys, they proclaim that it all begins very soon. It begins soon. What? You don't know. But damn, I 
aren't you interested? Yes! No! No! Yeah. No! Yes. Who the hell cares? Shut up, you. So this is episode one, and boy, did a lot happen. Action, comedy, drama, it's all there in perfect symmetry and excellently displays what the show is about. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Really? Really? The baddies, two of which we saw at the end, are the personification of sin. They are each led by one major characteristic, similar to the baddies of the Overlord game. And while Gluttony and Sloth are bland enough, some of the most interesting characters I've ever seen reside in this group, especially Greed. See, I'm Greed. I want everything you can think of. Money and women, power and sex, status, glory. I demand the finer things. And of course, I crave eternal life. Greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Greed is right. Greed works. But this is what I want to stress, why this episode 1 worked so well. It perfectly displays what the show is about. Sure, not everything is made clear right off the bat, but it doesn't have to. Although it makes the viewers interested by giving them a thousand and one questions to ask and answering them in due time. While we're waiting, there's great comedy, amazing fight scenes, and moments when you can't help but go, ah. There's also ninjas. Ninjas! Better ninjas! This is the Anime Empire. Thank you for watching.